Thank you. Sis, Sister Pat, notice I'm calling everybody brothers and sisters now. That's what we used to do at home in the church. We were family. Right. We were family. Right. And, uh, you know, the, the whole notion of, well, I can't, I can't sing. Everybody could sing. If you sounded out of tune, your heart was in tune because we were family. <laughs> Pat, Sister Pat, your entry point, what, what, what was that? Where is that? My entry point was in my mother's womb. Well, well. Because she was, as Phyllis talked about, my mother and father both, he was the pastor of the church. And so I was always at church, and by the time I reached three years of age um, and had come out of the womb and had, uh, what you call that? You said inhaled? Inhaled. All that stuff. Yes. Um, they had to, first of all, when I was coming up, they didn't allow black women to have their babies in the hospital. They had to have their babies at home on the floor. So my mother's water broke with me, and they had to rush her home from the church so that I could be born on the living room floor. Mm. And so at that point, I thank God that uh, I didn't pass away because I came out there. I've always been doing things the wrong way. I came out feet first. <laughs> <laughs> And I've been messed up ever since, but I tell you. <laughs> By the age of three, my father said, this child has a gift and we're going to make her use it. And you, when I was coming up, young folks, if your parents said you're going to do, you didn't you're talk back. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't an option. There's a theme here. There's a theme. No option. You just did it. And so my first song was Down at the Cross. Where my Savior died. What does that sound like, that melody? Let's see. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing from sin I cried. Well, there to my heart was the blood of life singing Glory to his name. Sing and glory to his name, precious name. Glory to his name. It was of our history, the sounds of our people, bringing salvation to a people. Pastor Gary, Pastor Gary, your entry point, sir. Well, I was born and raised pretty much in church, you know, stayed in church all the time. My mother took me along with my brothers, one sister, seven of us, two, Sister Cor, and uh, God's Pentecostal church, wasn't, ba wasn't Baptist. <laughs> it was cool though <laughs> but uh, it was Pentecostal uh, spontaneous the spontaneous singing there was no script and there was no order of service and if they had one they said it was subject to change anyway <laughs> subject to change <laughs> so, and it did it did when, you know four hours later you know it did <laughs> <laughs> Sing, have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Oh, have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. Have you tried my Jesus? He's all right. He's all right. He's all right.
Now, this idea of about praising God all the time, where do you think that came from? This idea of just praising God. Well, the slaves, they didn't have much to do, those that were enslaved. And on Sunday, it was their free time. And that's pretty much the a consistent sound you will hear today. God is worthy of all the glory. God is worthy of all the honor. God gives us his word. In the beginning was the word. And the word became flesh. And it dwelt among us. His name is Jesus. And the psalmist writes, I shall delight to do your will, Lord, for your law, your word is in my heart. The psalmist says, your word is in my heart, so I won't sin against you. Sing this. I shall delight to do. I shall delight to do God's will, God's will, for He has saved me, heal me, restore me, redeem me, yea. Thy law is within my heart. Thy law is within my heart. One, two, three, ah. The Seattle Pacific University Gospel Choir. Come on, y'all. I shall be like.
Listen to this now. We are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. I hold the nation up to your people. Doing God's will for us. God's law is in our hearts, when God's law is in our hands, when God's law is in our minds, when God controls us, we, we end up being this house for God. And think about this song. This next song, as you hear it, is entitled In the Sanctuary. We lift our hands in the sanctuary, meaning that we come... We come together with God's people to the house of God. And what are we going to do with our hands? We work with our hands, but we also sin with our hands. Say, God, forgive me. And you know what God does? He lifts us up. So this is really... When you study this piece, it's a song of praise, and it can also be used as a song of confession. Lord, we lift our hands in the sanctuary. Pastor Dave Morgan is going to come and lead the mass choir in the sanctuary.
My name is Pastor Pat Trudell Wright. Everybody calls me just plain Pat Wright, and that's right. That's okay with me. I am the co-founder of the Oneness Christian Center um, and also the founder director of the Total Experience Gospel Choir. I've always been around gospel music, and I've always enjoyed the rhythm, and I've always enjoyed the way it made you feel. Whatever your situation was in life, gospel music tended to um, take you to another space, and I enjoyed that space that I was in. So I taught myself to play the piano from watching the musician at my father's church, the main musician, Miss Connie Mae Black, watching her fingers. And then when I got a little older, listening to Ray Charles play the piano. So I noticed the way she played and the way the music that Ray Charles played had the same chord structure, basically. And so I've always loved that that rhythm that gospel music has and, and, and the way the tight three-part harmony and sometimes four-part and sometimes five-part. So gospel music has always been my way of thinking. Even when I do jazz or blues, you can tell I'm a gospel singer. The reason I know that God has directed my every footstep is because every door that was closed to me and, and it hurt me very badly God has always opened another door that was much bigger than the one that was closed. And I believe totally that if I acknowledge him in all my ways, that he will certainly direct my path. If someone asked me, who influenced you, Pat Wright? I would have to say, first of all, my parents. My parents were, my mother was a school teacher. My father, of course, a Baptist minister were my first influences in doing unto others as I would have them do unto me. Yes, God had a specific uh, job for me to do from birth to this day. And I, I know I'm on the journey. I can't separate me from the world of gospel. In our 
harvest of 2005, there was a massive hurricane on the Gulf Coast of Mississippi and in New Orleans. And this young lady and her brother were visiting down there with their grandparents. Their mother had sent them down for the first time to be on a plane by themselves and be all grown because she was 16 at the time. And while they were down there, the hurricane struck. And for eight days, we didn't know where this child was. But her uncle works for Little Debbie Snack Cakes. <laughs> and her uncle bribed somebody at the hospital to use a satellite phone so she could call home and let us know that she was okay. Then it took a few more days to get them back to Seattle. I assigned this song to every new person that comes in the choir that has a pretty good voice. When I get through with them, they have a very good voice. She sang it and it was just another song. Now it has become her testimony. And Mrs. Phyllis Birdwell, I always look for signs that God is in my decision to do what I'm doing. And in her testimony on the tape, she said that his eye is on the sparrow. Hallelujah. Is her favorite song. Camila, tell us about how God brought you through. Hurricane Katrina. Because his eye was also on you. discouraged why should the shadows come why should my heart feel lonely and long heaven and home when Jesus is my portion
sing. my director went ran back in the choir where where I why are you in the choir girl get down here you're right here okay you by yourself all by yourself okay you over here this is my able assistant this is Gina Brooks I told the choir this afternoon that, you know, when you get to a certain point in life, you ought to start looking for someone to take your place, pass the baton, know when to quit, get out of the way. Yes. So Gina's going to, I got what? Oh, yeah, honey. I look good, but I ain't that young. I just use skin products to make me look good to me. Okay. I just believe that you ought to enjoy the Lord wherever you are and however your situation is. If you smile about it, it'll get better. Except my voice hasn't changed a bit from all that rehearsal we did yesterday. We're going to do a song that's called Where There Is Unity, There Is Strength. So God, please give all your people unity. That's what we need. Would you give me that F chord, Mr. Big, again? All right, Sopranos, watch her. Ah! Uh -huh. 
land. Yes, that it is. Psalm 133 and 1. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brothers and sisters. Wyatt Sr. I am the senior pastor of Sure House Open Bible Church, also the worship leader there. Now, I've been in gospel music for 34 plus years now. If I could sum up what God has been teaching me through all this process of writing gospel music and composing it, singing it, is just be yourself, you know, be original. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of great artists that have come through the years, and uh, I was a great uh, Andre Crouch fan back in the day. Still, still am a, a great fan of his and his his songwriting. 
Uh, but, I mean, God doesn't need another Andre Crouch. You know, God needs a Gary Wyatt or all the other uh, honorees. That's who God needs. And so just to be original, stay true to what he has given me. It's, it's easy to want to sound like other people and be like other people. But just the biggest thing, when I started out, I was me. And, and when I end this journey, I'm going to be me and do what I do. The, the idea of delayed but not denied is in the delay, God is preparing us for something. You know, blessings take responsibility. Uh, oh, there, there's a responsibility along with blessings to whom much is given, much is required. And so when God is delaying things, he's not saying no. He's saying yes, but he wants us to be prepared. And so uh, that's the message I would like to leave that, you know, although you're being delayed, the point is, is to be prepared for the blessing that he's going to bestow or that he's going to give. And so that's the gist of the song, uh, you know, delayed but not denied uh, your blessings on the way. In the meantime, give the Lord some praise. Fix it in your mind. You're delayed but not denied. I'm Gary L. Wyatt, and this is delayed but not denied. Your blessings on the way. In the meantime, give the Lord some praise. Fix it in your mind. You're the man.
right now, listen. <laughs> this is a gospel fest. And the gospel story is this. We're going to sing this as one big choir. Everybody repeat after me. Wounded for me. Say it real loud. Wounded for me. Bled for me. Died for me. Buried for me. Rose for me. Now say, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. The resurrection. Say, he got up. If you believe it, put those hands together. Come on, if you believe it, get up on your feet. If you believe it.
Yeah. 
Dave Morgan, come down. Carl Kelly, Elias Bullock, Juan Huey Ray, Phyllis Birdwell, Pat Wright, Cora Jackson, Gary Wyatt. God bless you. Good night.